Welcome back to another action-packed episode of Parent Quick Smarts for 5th grade. In this episode, we will be covering 5th grade's Unit 5, Multiplication of Fractions. In the past, multiplication of fractions may have been taught to us simply as multiply across the top, then multiply across the bottom, find the GCF, and simplify. This simple procedure served us well in terms of merely finding a product. However, it did not really build an understanding of how or why the procedure works, or what we were doing with the values when we multiply. Our fifth grade students will be asked to explore using what they have already learned about adding fractions and multiplication of whole numbers to come to a deeper understanding of not only how to use this procedure for multiplication of fractions, but why it works. In this unit, your fifth grade child will build a conceptual understanding of the multiplication of fractions by a whole number using strategies such as repeated addition, area models, and number lines. Only after they have built a conceptual understanding of how to multiply fractions will they be introduced to the algorithm. By the end of this unit, your student will be able to multiply fractions by fractions and fractions by mixed numbers. When starting this unit, your child will most likely start by clarifying the meaning of multiplication. For example, the expression 3 times 4 represents 3 groups of 4, which is 12. Extending this thinking to fractions, the expression 2 thirds times 3 would be understood as 2 thirds of a group of 3, which would be 2. If a student has this understanding of multiplication, they could then reason what is happening in a multiplication expression such as 3 fourths times 8. They could see that their product will be less than 8 because we are finding a fraction or portion of a group of 8. By knowing the relative size of the product based on an understanding of the factors, the students will have a basis for determining the reasonability of their answer. To follow through and solve this problem, the students could use manipulatives such as unit cubes to show a group of 8. Then split that group into fourths. And from this model, they should be able to see that three-fourths of a group of eight would be six. Let's look at an example of a real-world problem that your fifth grade student may be challenged to solve. First, we would want the student to look at the problem and determine that it is asking them to find the amount of food that Spot gets. The time frame is a week in the problem which a student should understand is seven days. If Spot will be given three-fourths of a cup of food each day, then the student would have to find seven groups of three-fourths of a cup, or seven times three-fourths of a cup. Your child may estimate by understanding that three-fourths is almost a whole, and seven groups of a whole would be about seven cups of food for good old Spot. Next, your child would need to create a model to represent and explain their solution. For example, by using a number line, they could use what they already know about the multiplication of fractions as repeated addition of equal groups to show that seven groups or jumps of three-fourths would end at 21-fourths, or five holes and an extra fourth. After the student understands conceptually how to find the whole number of groups of a fractional amount, we would want them to try to relate their model to the more efficient algorithm. Seven groups of three-fourths would be 21-fourths using multiplication, which can be rewritten as five and one-fourth. By the end of this unit, students should be able to multiply mixed numbers, such as Alicia wants to cover the rectangular floor of her closet with tile. The floor is two and a half feet by two and a fourth feet. What is the total area? Students should be able to use their understanding of multiplication to see that two and one half groups of two and one fourth would be between four and six. Students could then be asked to directly model what is happening in this situation. Using an area model to show Alicia's closet floor, the student should be able to see that they are finding two and a half groups of two and a fourth. To create our model, we would first have to show two and one fourth 
by splitting each whole column into fourths and then highlighting the two whole and one fourth of a column. Now we would need to find two and one half groups or rows of that two and one fourth that we shaded. By splitting each of the whole rows or groups into halves and then highlighting the two whole and one half of a, one half of a group or row, the overlapping area now in light purple shows two and one half groups of two and a fourth. If we look at the model, we have now created a common unit of eighths as each whole square has been split into eight equal parts. We could find the product of two and one half times two and one fourth by adding up all of the eighths in each section. Four whole squares plus eight eighths plus one eighth plus four more eighths would give us a total of 13 eighths, or five and five eighths. Some ways that you could practice multiplying fractions with your child in the real world are cook with your child. When you need to scale the amount of a recipe down for half the number of servings, have your fifth grader find what half of each ingredient would be. Does your child receive an allowance? Ask them to figure out how much money would you, they would make if you paid them by the hour and they only worked three and two-fifths of an hour. Have you ever made Lego creations with your fifth grader? Try to make a scale model of your house or a room. Measure the dimensions and have your child figure out what they would be scaled down to, say, one-twentieth of the original size, and then create and share. Here are some sample problems that your students may be asked to solve as they progress through this unit. Some questions that you may want to ask your child to help build their understanding as they progress through the unit are, what happens to the product when one of the factors is increased or decreased? How do you model multiplying whole numbers by a fraction? What strategies can you use to multiply a fraction by a fraction greater than one? Thank you for joining us today on Parent Quick Smarts. Remember, the best way to support your child's education is to keep in communication with your child's teacher. Until next time, look at these websites, thinkcentral.com and elementarymath.mydhc.org. See you next episode.